Governor Bashir only has a couple of months left in office, but he is hitting the campaign trail. And he's not running for president yet, but Vice President Joe Biden has been invited to take part in a debate. Bill Bryant has details in the bottom line. Good evening. Governor Steve Bashir says he will actively campaign in the closing weeks of the race to replace him for Democrat Jack Conway. Appearing for a wide-ranging interview just before he enters his last two months in office, Bashir says he will work for the Democratic ticket and especially for Conway. At this point, are you going to be aggressive in the last uh, few weeks uh, before the election? I've been very aggressive and will continue to be very aggressive, uh, Bill, for Jack Conway. And it's a simple answer. I've worked hard for eight years to get this state to where it is today, and we've talked about a lot of where we are in education and health care and economic development. We've got this state on the move. I know that Jack Conway will take that foundation and build on it. Bashir also addressed the controversy surrounding marriage licenses, including lawsuits filed against him by Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis. Bashir says he respects the right of people to disagree with the Supreme Court's decision on same-sex marriage, but he said he advised clerks that they needed to comply with the court ruling regardless of their personal or religious objections. The Kentucky Newsmakers interview will run this coming Sunday morning. CNN says it will invite Vice President Joe Biden to take part in the first Democratic presidential presidential primary debate, even if he doesn't decide until that day that he's going to be a candidate. The network released its criteria for the October 13th debate today. Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, Lincoln Chafee, Martin O'Malley, and Jim Webb have already been invited. Republican presidential frontrunner Donald Trump is calling for an overhaul of the tax code that would eliminate income taxes for millions of Americans and lower them for the rich. The plan calls for eliminating federal income taxes on individuals earning less than $25,000 and married couples who earn less than $50,000. Corporate tax rates and rates on higher incomes would also come down, which Trump says would make the economy take off. CBS will have details of President Obama and Russian President Putin's day at the United Nations today. That's coming up at 6.30. Bill Bryant, WKYT. This Thursday will mark the start of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and with that comes a Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure in Lexington. Sam and I will both be there, and we want you to join us as well. The race is this Saturday morning at 9 and begins in downtown at the Robert F. Stevenson Courthouse Plaza. Last year, nearly 4,200 people took part in the annual race to fight breast cancer. Runners and walkers are welcome, and this year, Komen Lexington is offering chip timing as well. The day, though, is about so much more than the race. Getting to see the survivors, uh, getting to watch the survivors parade, and uh, seeing all those people there in honor or in memory of someone is just uh, astounding. You can register online. We have a link for you at WKYT.com. And you have two chances to pick up your race packet ahead of Saturday at the Komen office on North Ashland Avenue. Tomorrow, you can get your packet from 9 to 6 and on Thursday from noon to 8. Registration is $25.30 before Saturday for timed runners. A warning to customers of a southern Kentucky water plant why officials say people need to avoid drinking the water for now. New clues tonight in a violent home invasion at a Wayne County vacation house. A look at the sketch of the man that police believe they're looking for. The University of Kentucky College of Health Sciences has received the largest grant in college history. Coming up, we'll tell you how that money is being used and who it will benefit. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 5:30. Good evening. Some schools in southern Kentucky were forced to close today because of a problem at a Wayne County water plant. Officials at the Monticello Utility Commission say they had a chemical problem in the water system this morning. All of Wayne County and part of Pulaski County was affected. The malfunction caused schools to close and for leaders to issue a boil water advisory until further notice. Our Phil Pendleton is in Wayne County. He has more on the problem in our top story at 530. Water plant officials say the situation is that there are some biological components in the water in Lake Cumberland and this bleach is used to treat that water. It treats any biological elements that might be in the water to you know, anything that pathogenic that could harm a human being. But that pipe that carries the bleach into the raw water from the lake malfunctioned, allowing the potentially bad water to seep into the entire system. 
School officials learned of the problem shortly after it happened about 3 o'clock this morning. And they had a choice between trying to logistically get bottled water for all their employees and, and students or just taking the day off, and they chose to, to stay home today. The boil water advisory is now in place for the entire county. Parts of southern Pulaski County are included. Local restaurants are going to have to serve bottled water and make sure any water that they're using for food preparation is, is boiled for at least three minutes. The Monticello Water Plant has a new facility that is only about a year old, and officials say there's still a few bugs in the system. So we think some air bubbles got into it and uh, just clogged it up. Water officials hope to have the situation rectified sometime tomorrow when the boil water advisory is expected to be lifted. In Wayne County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. We have learned that Wayne County will have school on Tuesday, but that bottled water will be served all students and staff. Police in southern Kentucky are looking for a man who broke into a lake home in Wayne County and attacked the vacationers inside last month. But tonight, we now know what that man may look like. The Wayne County Sheriff's Office released these sketches of the man today. Both drawings, they say, are of the same man. Deputies say the man broke into a lake house at Lake Cumberland on August 3rd. Back in August, one of the vacationers told us the man came in, attacked his sister, and then got away with cash and drugs. I honestly believe we were targeted because they knew specifically who they, the, the man specifically knew who to go after what he wanted because he passed up the first floor bedrooms. When we first reported the story in August, police told us then that they worried that releasing too much on the suspect would harm their investigation. More rain is on the way tonight, and hopefully you still have that umbrella handy. Yes, we could see some showers and storms sticking around into tomorrow. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has more on that. Chris? Yeah, that's when the real action is actually going to kick in, guys, as we go into the day on Tuesday. Showers, thunderstorms, but getting the increase, first of all, we've got to get the clouds to thicken up, and they're doing just that as of right now. Still at 80 degrees here at the station. Humidity is up there, 62%. So it's got almost a late September muggy feel to the air. Defender. Picking up on a little bit of action now across southern and southeastern Kentucky. Hyden, Hazard, just south of Jackson. Then a couple of sprinkles or maybe a light passing shower. Berea down toward Mount Vernon. Look what's gearing up to the south of us. Scattered showers. That's what gets in here tonight and early tomorrow. Then the big push of moisture coming out of the Gulf of Mexico will lift its way to the north and impact our weather here across central and eastern Kentucky. So, again, if you are out and about this evening, those temperatures will drop through the 70s into the upper 60s by the time we hit 11 o'clock. Still a shower or two at any given point or time. Tomorrow, rain. Rain becomes much more widespread. We'll show you why that may be a sign of things to come in a chilly seven day forecast here in a few minutes. Police in central Kentucky are looking for a man wanted on several charges. Our county by county coverage at 5 30 begins in Nelson County. Bartstown police say they're trying to track down 35 year old Timothy Hamilton. They tell us he's a suspect in a home invasion last week. Hamilton also is wanted on several charges, including assault and being a persistent felony offender. In Laurel County, police have arrested a man wanted out of Florida. London police say they stopped a man on Walton Drive last night, and during the stop, they found that the driver, 38 year old Lucky Ross, had no driver's license and was a wanted fugitive out of Florida for a felony warrant. Police say they also found a bag of marijuana in the car. Ross was booked into the Laurel County Detention Center. And in Hardin County, we now know the name of a man killed yesterday in a crash. According to a Louisville TV station, 58 year old Michael Sinclair of Canada died in the wreck on the Bluegrass Parkway near Elizabethtown. State police say a man driving east in a Ford Focus crossed the median and went into the westbound lanes. They say Sinclair was driving west on the Bluegrass Parkway and could not avoid the Ford Focus. Sinclair hit the Ford Focus and died at the scene. The driver of that Ford Focus was taken to the University of Louisville Hospital with life life threatening injuries. A big win for the University of Kentucky, but we're not talking about Saturday's win on the football field. Today, UK researchers announced that they have won a 4.2 million dollar grant to look for ways to prevent military injuries. New at 5:30, our Mike Linden tells us how the university plans to use that money for research. UK officials say the College of Health Sciences has received a grant of nearly $4.2 million, the largest in the college's history. 
They say the money will go toward research focused on sports and military injury prevention and mitigation. Injuries that occur very similar to those that occur in, in, in the athletic population um, to the various extremities and joints and backs. UK College of Health Sciences officials say high level athletes and members of the military compare in more ways than one. They say both endure high levels of stress in their respective fields, but both are also very physically active. Lepart says since both high level athletes and special operators in the military train at such a high level, they both face a similar risk of injury. These are the types of injuries that typically are short term disabilities, but can negatively impact our operators' success and safety when they're deployed. The grant goes hand in hand with the development of a new 6,000 square foot UK Sports Science Research Institute laboratory. UK officials say the lab and the research conducted there are vital toward keeping the men and women of the military safe. High performance is quite necessary uh, to, uh, to perform in the mission. And so uh, anything that can come out of that uh, would, be, uh, you know, would be well received. In Lexington, Mike Linden, WKYT. Pretty impressive. The new laboratory on campus will be completed by next summer. Most public employees in Kentucky will see a bit less in their paycheck starting 2017. That's when the Internal Revenue Service will start applying a Social Security and Medicare tax to the employees' contributions to their retirement funds. A typical public employee who makes $40,500 a year, $45,000, will see about $155 more withheld from their pay in 2017. That comes out to about $650 each paycheck. Public school teachers are also affected by the change, but to a much smaller extent because teachers do not pay the Social Security tax, only the Medicaid tax. A consumer alert. The FBI is warning the public about virtual kidnappings. Criminals calling people claiming they have abducted a loved one and then demanding ransom. Several cities are seeing an increase in these kinds of scams. I believed them. I, I truly believed them. Still worried for their safety, this mother and daughter agreed to talk if we didn't share their names. How much money you can pay right now by yourself so we can make your project go? They're victims of a growing scam called virtual kidnapping. He said, lady, this is the deal. I have your brother. He told me that he hit him over the head and he was bleeding out. The apparent kidnapper then demands thousands of dollars through a wire transfer to return him safely. When my brother came back, if I don't have the answer, my brother going to shoot this guy. An FBI kidnapping expert says several organizations use these scams to make money. Thousands of dollars in ransom. And you're talking about a, a criminal organization that is capable of doing more than one kidnapping at a time. The perpetrators use social media to research their potential victims, paying close attention to where they live, places they commonly visit, and connected friends. The FBI has seen a recent increase in cases in New York, Nevada, Texas, and California. This family never paid any money. Minutes after hanging up on the scammers, they were able to get in touch with their loved one. Family is family, and when someone plays a game with your family, it's hard to forget. And the FBI says criminal prosecution of these criminals is unlikely because the cell numbers that they're calling from are often untraceable. Authorities say that if you get one of these calls, contact police.